So mum and dad tried um, to conceive a baby um, for about nine years um, and it wasn't happening. So mum went to her local GP, which um, came to the conclusion that depression being caused not being able to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So then they suggested she go and see um, a local gynaecologist in Bristol. Um, which she did, and they said there was about a one in a million chance of her ever having a baby. Oh, God. Then, and then she said, but, she said, um, there is a trial going on up in Oldham. Um, I can contact Dr Patrick Steptoe and see if he'll be able to accept you onto the programme. So, um, she, Dr Hinton, um, the local gynaecologist, wrote off, and Patrick said, well... Can we have an in uh, interview with them? So mum and dad went all the way up to Oldham, which is about 400 miles from Bristol. Right. So quite a yeah. wet journey. Yeah. 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 And um, they had an interview with Patrick, and Patrick said he would be delighted to accept mum and dad onto the programme. Um, mum had to have an operation which they had to fund themselves because um, it was to remove her fallopian tubes before they could even start the treatment, which, luckily, Dad won £500 on the football pools. <laughs> <laughs> so that enabled them to be able to have the operation. <laughs> and then, here I am. Here you are, yeah. A success, <laughs> absolutely. How did people react to your birth at the time? Because, as you said, like you're the first ever, and it's kind of it's nearly commonplace now. It's a route that so many other couples go down, yeah. but for you... You were the first. Like, what were people saying? Um, there was lots of different things. I mean, when we, um, when I was 12 days old by the time I got home from Oldham, because I was born up in Oldham mm -hmm. and then had to travel the 400 miles, but it just wasn't safe, the amount of press that there was at the hospital and, again, at our home, because they'd managed to find out where we lived oh in Bristol. Oh, my God. Um, so I came home, I was 12 days old, and when Mum finally was able to take me out, with what in a buggy or a pram like most parents mm. want to do. Mm. We went to a local bakery and um, the ladies in there went, oh, that, this is the test you baby, isn't it? And mum went, yeah. And they went, oh, can we have a look? So um, mum put the hood down. It was one of those big, with the big wheels, with the big old yeah. fashioned. And they put the hood down and they went, well, she's normal. <laughs> and my mum said, what did you expect? Someone with two heads. Yeah. Um, people just didn't grasp it that I was completely normal. Mm. They did over 100 tests when I was born, um, one being all my fingerprints, because my mum had the C-section, so she was completely out until the 26th. So she got to meet me on the 26th of July, and I had black ink on my fingertips. And my mum's like, why she got black ink on her fingertips? Oh, we've taken, taken her fingerprints. That's... But they couldn't find... There was nothing they could find wrong, and I haven't had a test to date now. So they had all the ones when I was born, and that was it. There and you've gone. never been fingerprinted since? No, you've never been no. fingerprinted no. since, no. no. OK. Well, no. you still got to go through Dublin Airport, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, when you were born, like, you were held up... You were a beacon of hope for so many. Um, were your parents... Like, like, did they realise just what a big deal this was? Um, no, I don't think they did, because... When Mum went up for meetings with Patrick Steptoe, um, he was a gynaecologist, so there were pregnant ladies there, there were ladies with new babies, so Mum just assumed that it had happened before. Right. Um, she didn't... I mean, I don't think... They did tell her, because there was a lot of paperwork Mum had to sign and things like that, so they did tell her, but she didn't, just didn't take it in. She was pregnant, that was all she wanted. OK. Uh, when, when did you realise that your birth was, was, was such a big deal? So I was four years old and it was just before I went to school and mum and dad sat me down and showed me the video of my birth. Hang on, a four? Yes. Right, OK. Um, it's a bit bloody and a bit gory for a four-year-old. Yeah. But I just took it and watched it and then, obviously, as I got older, I used to sit and listen... Um, to the interviews mum and dad were taking part in mm -hmm. and pick things up from there. And then when I got to senior school, you do the sex education. Yeah. 
And I think then the, the penny dropped and it was like, right, now I, can, I do understand. OK. I get it. They didn't have I get to it. have that conversation. No, 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 they didn't have the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of school, Lynn, did your classmates know that you were an IVF baby or did that ever come up? That was part of the reason they showed me the video when I was four, so okay. that if any other child said anything, I was aware at the okay. time. But I went through um, infants, primary school and senior school with the same group of people. Okay. So it was quite easy. And once we sort of all learnt together... So they used to say things like, oh, how did you get out of the test tube? And then I used to say to them, a test tube's not even used. And they used to look at me and they'd say, well, why is it called that then? I said, I don't know. Because you were the test tube baby. That's the how I you know. were referred to. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. But just test tube was never used, so... They just put me in a large test tube under a light heat on a Bunsen yeah. burner and yeah. I just cooked. Yeah. 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 And I yeah. just, yeah. And now I, here I am now. Here I am. But, but like, kids have no filters, so they yeah. will ask questions. Yeah, they like will that. ask. And, I mean, it was completely fine. 